preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. Good night to everyone, and a special good night to you, our online viewers. I trust you are well rested and rejuvenated to begin another week. I am your host, Sister Sabrina Beggs. We welcome you to our Sunday night prayer service here on Mission Live on Facebook and YouTube. This is another presentation on the book of Daniel. And tonight's message is focused on Daniel chapter 5. I encourage you to share this program with your friends and family members. Encourage them to view tonight's message to gain the blessing God has in store. Before we go further, let us bow our heads as we pray. Almighty God, we are truly thankful to you for protecting us and guiding us and allowing us to begin another week. We thank you for all your blessings upon us. We ask that you place a special blessing on tonight's program, and we hope that everything will go according to your will. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And we know that every program is successful when there is music and singing. So at this time, we will have our song service by Sister Sorana and the Swin Sisters. Join us as we give praise in worship and song. Hymn 21, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise.
15, my faith looks up to the 517. <laughs>
Take the world, but give me Jesus. That song service has lifted my spirit heavenward. I hope each of you tuning in was also blessed. Remember to invite a friend or family member to view this program. Please remember to like and share the page. Permit me to share this quote by E.M. Bongs. Prayer should not be regarded as a duty which must be performed, but rather as a privilege to be enjoyed, a rare delight that is always revealing some new beauty. End of quote. Prayer connects us with God. Prayer keeps us fully anchored. And as we continue with tonight's program, we must continue in a prayerful manner. So at this time, I invite you to join us in our intercessory prayer as Pastor Bernard Lyons approach the throne of grace on our behalf. And then we will have our scripture reading taken from the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 5, verses 5 on to 11. I invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray. Loving Father and God, we say thank you for the breath of life. We say thank you for health. We say thank you for your many blessings upon us. And even the opportunity whereby we can be in the land of the living to experience your goodness and your grace. We pray your forgiveness upon us and the sins that so easily beset us. We pray, O oh God, that you would give us the strength to overcome, to stand fast, to stand bold amidst 
the temptations of the enemy so that we can rise in the newness of life to continue, dear God, with your Holy Spirit by our side, conquering and to conquer. We pray today for those who are struggling, those who are weak, those who desire a spirit to overcome the challenges of this life. We ask, O oh God, that you would empower them so that they would be able to rise above their circumstances. They would know that their situation is not the end. The darkness does not mean failure, but there is yet light to come. There is still hope. There is still a moment of joy. There is still a period of happiness that they can look forward to because we know, Father, that you are able to lift us from whatever situation or circumstance we may find ourselves in. We pray today for our nation, even as we would have come out of the festive season, yet the pleasure still rings in the hearts of men and women. We ask, Lord, that instead of seeking that road of pleasure, we would seek to fortify our minds with the word of God, to stand against the wiles of the enemy and stand with Jesus Christ. We pray today that you continue to bless the work, bless your church, and as we plan, help us to work honestly towards your second coming. Lord, when you come, we pray that those in the hearing of my voice, and even those, dear God, that we would evangelize to those that we would connect with, that they too would experience your goodness and find a saving relationship with you to go home with you, to spend time and eternity both in heaven and in the earth made new. We say thank you, dear God, for hearing and answering our prayers today. Thank you for your marvelous grace, and thank you for your showers of blessings. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our online viewers, I must say that without you, tonight's program will not be a success. I trust that you are sharing the page with others so that they too can gain the blessing in store. When the raging storms of life blow us to and fro, God is there to calm the winds and to keep us safe. We must know, however, that prayer should not only be for emergencies, but true prayer is a way of life. Make praying a habit. Pray through good and bad times. Let us now pause for a cause as we listen to sweet heavenly singing by our dear sister Kimberly. God can do anything with anything. He can heal any hurt, any suffering. Every cross, every care, every burden he'll bear. For anyone, anywhere, God can do anything. He turns nothing to something, is a giver of life. He's hope to the hopeless. And the sight to the blind, he makes impossible, possible when there's no other way. He makes the blackest thing white as snow, that's why we can sing. God can do anything with anything. He can heal any hurt any suffering. Every cross, every care, every burden he'll bear. For anyone, anywhere, God can do anything. The fairest of 10,000, my soon coming King, Jehovah Messiah, the reason why I sing is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. My Savior and Redeemer is my closest friend. God 
God can do anything with anything. He can heal any hurt, any suffering. Every cross, every camp, every burden he'll bear. For anyone, anywhere, God can do anything. God can do anything with anything. He can heal any hurt, any suffering. Every cross, every care, every burden he'll bear. For anyone, anywhere, God can do anything. Every cross, every care, every burden he'll bear. For anyone, anywhere, God can do anything. For anyone, anywhere, God can do anything. That was marvelous singing. I feel blessed and highly favored by God's mercies, don't you? It is now time for the spoken word. Please encourage your friends and family or anyone within the hearing of your voice to come and view the program. I present to you the servant of the hour, the man chosen specially by God to deliver his message. So at this time, we will turn our undivided attention to Pastor Maxine Noel. The Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This evening, I'm really happy to be here for our Sunday evening online service program. And we are looking at an amazing book, the book of Daniel. And tonight, we will dive straight into it, you know, to enjoy ourselves in the word of God. And so I want to just welcome each and every one of you. And I'm really happy for so many of you that have tuned in this evening. I pray that as you fellowship and worship with us this evening, that your relationship with Jesus would not be the same again. But even as we go into the word of God, I, I want to just take this moment to, you know, encourage you to stop what you are doing, you know, and share and like the page. You know, I want you to call up a friend and tell them, tune in, because something grand is about to happen. This evening, we are looking at, as I said earlier, the book of Daniel. And I want to take you to the book of Daniel, chapter 5. And I will read in your hearing from verse 1 to 7. Daniel, chapter 5, from verse 1 to 7. Reading from the NET version this evening. Daniel, chapter 5, from verse 1 to 7. The Bible says, King Belshazzar prepared a great banquet or party for 1,000 of his nobles, and he was drinking wine in front of them all. While under the influence of wine, Belshazzar issued an order to bring in the gold and silver vessels, the ones that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had confiscated from the temple in Jerusalem, so that the king and his nobles, together with his wives and concubines, could drink from them. Verse 3 says, So they brought the gold and silver vessels that had been confiscated from the temple, the house of God in Jerusalem, and the king and his nobles, the Bible says, together with his wives and concubines, drank from them. So they, so they drank wine, they, they praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron and wood and stone. And verse 5 says, watch this, at that very moment, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the royal palace wall opposite the lampstand. The king was watching the back of the hand that was writing, then all the color Watch this. All the color 
drained from the king's face and he became alarmed. The joints of his hip gave way and his knees began knocking together. And so this evening, I want to speak to you on this simple topic. Party done. Party done. Bow your heads with me. Father, we are truly grateful this evening for this wonderful opportunity whereby we can go into your word and enjoy the blessing that is encapsulated within your word. We pray tonight that every distraction, every tiredness will be removed from us because we know that you are about to speak and we ask, O oh Lord, that you would open our minds and our hearts and help us as we listen, we would have the attitude to put into practice the teachings from your word this evening. We pray for the empowerment of your Holy Spirit, that you take full control and charge of this session at this moment. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Party done. You can type that in the chat. Party done. We, we, we live in a society where it's fabric. An outlook is driven by the notion that we should live and enjoy life to its fullest by partying until we drop. Because all we have is one life to live. And so as a result of this notion, wherever we turn, you are always hearing and seeing of a promotion that is either connected with a small party or a large party. As a matter of fact, our society is so driven by parties that recent statistics have highlighted that there is either one, watch this, there is either one or more parties that are recorded every four hours on an average in a day. Which would suggest that in a day that is made up of 24 hours, there can be at least 18 parties that occur on a daily basis. I hear them saying to you tonight. Now, this is a lot of parties, and you don't have to go far to believe me. You can just look at our recent concluded festive season, and you will notice that there were plenty of parties that were promoted prior to Carnival Monday. Parties such as Juve before July. Hello, somebody. Jab Jab Fest. Pre-day, white in the moonlight, fantastic Thursday, bacchanal Friday, majestic Wednesday, fed can't over, parties all over the place. And so because our society is so engrossed, watch this, with this ideology that we should party hard and, and, and party hard, one can recognize by the behavior of the majority within our society that they have forgotten the true essence of why they were created. And the last time I checked, we, we, we were not created to please ourselves. But based on the Bible, we were created by the Most High God to glorify him and praise his holy name. And so to be engrossed only in this ideology that we should only live life to please and enjoy ourselves is a dangerous thing. Because somewhere I read... In 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15 to 17, I want to read this passage to you. 1 John chapter 2 verses 15 and 17. The Bible says, do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. And verse 16 says, for the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in all our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And watch what verse 17 says. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave, but anyone who does, notice what the Bible says, but anyone who does, notice what the Bible says, please, please hear me tonight the bible says but anyone who does what the text is saying that not everybody uh, what, the, what the text is saying not 
Salvation is not based on those who would be moving from down here to up there. Those who would see the kingdom of God. Those who would walk and live with Jesus. It's not people that say they are Christian, but people who do what God says. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Because there are many of us who are just saying, but not doing. Oh Lord, have mercy. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? But the Bible says that they that does the will of God, they that pleases God will live forever. However, please permit me to jump back into the text and make this more practical to you based on the text. This would suggest that the latest Rolex, the latest Rolex watch will pass away. The latest iPhone, are you hearing me saying to you young people, will pass away. The latest Jordan's will, hello somebody, will pass away. The latest wig or eyelashes, because I've seen of recent, there are many young people or many young ladies, if you please, that is wearing some eyelashes that is very long. Hello somebody. The Bible says that these things will pass away. The degree and the PhD that we are all running after based on the text, based on the Bible, it will pass away. Even the biggest house based on the Bible will pass away. Thousands and millions of dollars that we all have in the bank will pass away. But watch this tonight. We need to understand even the parties that some of you are so thrilled to engage in based on the Bible tonight it will pass away. That's why I've come by here to tell you don't run after things that will pass away but run after things that will last forever. As a matter of fact don't be engrossed in something that has no eternal value. Hello somebody. Because somewhere I read in Mark chapter 8 and verse 36, the Bible says, For what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? In other words, what would it profit a man or a woman to engage in all kinds of parties and lose his or her soul? Mm -hmm. Well, tonight, there is a man by the name of Belshazzar who thought that life was only centered and made up a wrong party and enjoying life to the fullest. Hello, somebody tonight. In fact, if you pay keen attention to the story of Belshazzar, you would notice, hello, somebody, that there are coming a time or there comes a time where we must recognize that opportunities seldom, not twice. Did you hear what I just said? I said, there is coming a time where we must recognize that opportunities sell them, not twice. What do you mean, preacher? Well, if you pay keen attention to critical passages in the Bible, you will notice that there, are, that, that there were persons in the Bible that had received several opportunities and others only received one because of past experiences. However, based on the text, Belshazzar was the type of person that would not profit by others' mistakes. In fact, based on the context of the text, one may conclude that King Belshazzar only had one opportunity. Which would suggest that the door of opportunity when it comes to salvation must be acted upon right then or right now. And I have come to realize that we are living in a society that has the tendency of either hesitating or procrastinating when it comes to the things of God. And so we either wait too long or we wait too late. Are you hearing me saying to you tonight? However, this evening, can I tell you that when it comes to salvation, there is no tomorrow, there is no next week or even next year. Salvation, based on the Bible, is always now. That's why I've come by here to tell you, don't be like King Belshazzar who chose not to learn from the experience of his grandfather coming back to that. However, when we study the life and the behavior of King Belshazzar, it teaches us the lesson that there is coming a time when all party would done. Oh, you didn't know what I just said to you tonight. Because how many of you know that there comes a time when God would have enough? In other words, there is coming a time where God will draw the line. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you tonight? 
And if you don't believe me, you can ask the antediluvian world who was destroyed because God had enough of the wickedness. What about Sodom and Gomorrah? They also experienced the wrath of God, which once again demonstrates that God has a limit, which would suggest that we don't only serve the God that is merciful and long-suffering, but we also serve the God of justice. That's why it is so critical that we live a life that demonstrates how much we appreciate the grace and mercies of God. Because how many of you know we serve the God that knows and that knows how and when to crash parties? Hello, did you just said? I said, how many of you know that we serve the God that knows how and when to crash parties? In fact, based on the context of the text, one may conclude that Belshazzar and his company and his companies were in the heat of the party. <laughs> Hear me now, somebody. In other words, the session or the party was at the peak. Because you must know that there are three different levels in a party. Watch this, somebody, tonight. First, there is the beginning of the party. And this is where people are just warm, warming up to the session and getting into the vibes. But then there is the middle or the peak of the party. And this is where everyone are now warmed up to the session. And this is where the intoxication of drinks begins to manifest itself in the behavior of those under the influence of alcohol. As a matter of fact, watch this, somebody. It is critical that we catch this point tonight. Watch this. Watch this. As a matter of fact, when, when, when we study uh, the, the three levels of the various parties, you know that at, at the peak is where you would see things that are done that are not normal. <laughs> and then finally, there is the end. And, and this is where everyone is tired and ready to go home. However, based on the context of the text, one may conclude that when the hand began to write on the wall that this party was not yet over, but rather this party was at the peak. Which suggests that when the hand began to write on the wall, Belshazzar and his companies were partying and boogieing down with their minds intoxicated and nowhere on God. And when I think and analyze and analyze this particular detail in the story, the Spirit of God impressed upon me the idea that this world would also be crushed, be crushed by God or put an end to at the peak of its wickedness. <laughs> and, 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 and I know someone may ask, well, Pastor, how, how do you know that this world is at its peak of its wickedness? But well, when a priest, watch this, when a priest can choose to abuse and sexually harass young boys, this is evidence of a world at its peak of its wickedness when a president of a particular country can decide to invade another country without suitable or valid reason this is evidence of the world that is at its peak of its wickedness when a man can choose to take the life of a mother and and a tree of four children. This is evidence of a world that it is at its peak of its wickedness. When a husband can leave his lovely wife and go and sleep with another man. This is evidence of a world at its peak of its wickedness. When an individual can choose to change the natural gender to the opposite gender, which is transgender. This is evidence, hello somebody, of a world that is at its peak of its wickedness. And so based on the context of the text tonight, it was at that very moment when King Belshazzar and his companies decided to be proud. It was at that very moment when King Belshazzar and his companies decided to violate the things that are sacred and holy to God. It was at that very moment when King Belshazzar and his companies decided to ignore the impending threat of the Medes and Persian. It was at that very moment that the Lord decided that this is the time to step in. Because understand tonight, family of God and visiting friends, that wickedness will never prevail in the presence of a God that is righteous. 
So it doesn't matter how long, watch this. It doesn't matter how long God would take to deal with wickedness and rebellion. Please just know this, that he will put an end to sin and wickedness. Are you hearing me saying to you tonight? Which would suggest that there is coming a day when the party would done. Hello? Did you know what I said to you tonight? I said there's coming a day when the party would done. As a matter of fact, based on the text, it would suggest that there is coming a day when God will put an end to those who are constantly violating the things that are set apart for holy use. Which means that those who are constantly participating in the practice and lifestyle of fornication, masturbation, adultery, weed smoking, and alcohol drinking soon and very soon, God will declare to you that this party is over. Because please pay attention to this experience of Belshazzar. Sometimes we take life for granted. Sometimes we look at the experiences of others and we just brush it aside. And so it is critical that we pay keen attention to biblical experiences. In fact, you will notice that God only puts an end to parties as a result of disobedience and rebellion. That's why it is critical that we live a life that pleases him now. Because if we continue to disobey him, there is coming a time when the party would end. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said? I said there is coming a time when the party will end. Because how many of you know we serve the God that is the beginning? Hello? I said we serve the God that is the beginning and the end. And so it is of utmost importance that we pay keen attention to the experience of others that we might be governed and be profited by the mistakes and the experience of those in the past so that we don't have to have the same results. However, the Bible now highlights, watch this, that the party is at a standstill. Lord have mercy. Hello? I said, the Bible now highlights and depicts that the party is now at a standstill. No one is dancing. Lord have mercy. Neither is no one, neither is anyone drinking. Can you see the scenes? The place that was filled with noise and excitement a moment ago is now filled with extreme silence. Because we must know that when God moves, everything needs to remain silent. Hello, somebody. When God chooses to move, there is no doubt that he is moving. Hear me know somebody. Because how many of you know that when he chooses to move, everything have to give way to the almighty God. However, the Bible depicts that the hand of God begins to write upon the wall. And it is clearly seen by all in the party. Hello somebody tonight. And what is amazing is that what was written on the wall was not able to be interpreted by those in the, in the session. And I had to ask myself the question, why did God stop the party? To give a particular message to those who attended the session, but prevents them from understanding the message. But then the Spirit of God impresses upon my mind that spiritual things are spiritually discerned. In other words, common man or the common woman is not that is not filled with the Holy Spirit, that is not empowered by God, cannot understand and interpret the things of God. That's why it is critical tonight, family of God, that we are filled with the Spirit of the Most High God so that we can discern the plans and the purpose that God has for our lives. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you tonight? And so the Bible says... That no Nebuchadnezzar, that no Belshazzar, sorry, is in awe as he look 
looks upon the wall as he looks at the wall as he looks at the hand writing on the wall the bible depicts that nebuchadnezzar that belshazzar sorry his knees started to shake his his blood in his face one no more in other words his face turned white because he's looking upon the wall and he's only seen a hand writing on the wall. <laughs> However, even though this man and his companions could not have understand the interpretation, God always has a man who can Hello, God always has a man who can understand and interpret his inscription. I hear him saying to you tonight. And so the king summoned this man called Daniel. However, when the man of God entered into the party arena, notice what the man of God did. In fact, based on the Bible, he did not choose to go straight into the interpretation of the inscription, but rather he chose to take the moment, he chose to take a moment to preach towards King Belshazzar. And notice what he said towards the king. He said, hey, did you remember what had happened to your grandfather? For he was proud just like you. But God humbled and teach him in the field for seven long years that he must reverence and honor the most high God. But you, King Belshazzar, even though you knew all that, you still chose to forget what the Lord had done to your grandfather. And because of that, tonight, God numbered your kingdom and brought it to an end. In fact, when he evaluates your life, he has also found you weighed in the balance and you have found wanting and your kingdom also shall be divided among the Medes and the Persian Empire. And so all at and so all this happened, hello, watch this tonight, all this happened because Belshazzar chose not to learn from the experience of his grandfather. Can I tell you tonight, which would suggest that the experience that we, that the experience that, 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 that happens in, 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 in our lives is there for our learning and, admon and, and admonitions. That's what is critical, watch this. Today that we don't forget what happened to our relatives. It is critical that we don't forget what had happened to our friends. In fact, we must allow the experiences of our friends and families to wake us up from our sleep. And so when we attend funeral services, we must allow its, these services to, to, to wake us up to the fact that life is fragile. When we visit hospital, we must allow these visitation to wake us up to the fact that life is short. Hello, somebody. When we see the things that are happening in our world, we should allow these things to wake us up to the fact that Jesus Christ is coming again. But please notice tonight, the Bible says that King Belshazzar kingdom was numbered and his life was weighed in the balance and his kingdom would now be divided to the Medes and the Persian and the text ended up by saying that very night King Belshazzar died He didn't have the experience or the opportunities that we all have tonight. Because there are many of you who have been, who have been receiving opportunities upon opportunities. And you have not been taking heed to what you have been receiving. That's why I have come by here tonight to tell you, please don't take life for granted. No, as Jesus speaks to your heart, don't say, give me tomorrow. 
Don't say, come back next week. But as God speaks to you tonight, you must accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If Belshazzar had took the lessons from his grandfather, his life would have been preserved. But his mind was wrapped up on only excitement for the moment. His mind was only wrapped up with enjoying life now. And forget that there is or there can be life after death. Tonight, it is critical that we don't play the fool with the opportunities that are given to us. The Bible says that he died that very night. This could be your last night. But what is critical is that when the hand was written on the wall, this was a signal that probation had been closed for Belshazzar. Which means that you can be alive and still dead. Are, are you hearing me saying to you tonight? It, it, it also means that there are a lot of us that are living tonight and your life is being written or your, or your decision is being written by God. That's why it is critical that we don't waste time. That's why it is critical that while we hear the voice of God, we harden not our heart, but we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior now. And so the Bible says that when the hand written was written on the wall and the interpretation was given to Belshazzar. Instantly he died. There was no chance for him to change. The chance for him to change was long gone. And now his life was taken away from him. What would you do tonight? Would you accept the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ even as he speaks to you tonight? Because please know this, that there's coming a time when the party will be finished. But tonight we have the hope that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse. And that's the type of God we serve. That even when we are playing the fool, he's still running after us. But there is something that we need to do. We need to make the decision to accept him as our Lord and Savior. He would not force us. But even if he would not force us, there is a line, there is a cutoff point with Jesus. And tonight, you don't know where that cutoff point is. That's why, even as you hear his voice tonight, it is critical that you accept him as your Lord and Savior. And so tonight there, there, there might be someone who have been engaging only in the pleasures of this life. You are only thrilled by the things that the world offers. Tonight I want to tell you don't be like Belshazzar. Don't be like the, the king that chose to run after the physical things rather than spiritual things. Tonight, I encourage you to choose Jesus over the things of the world. Because when you choose him, you are making a decision to live with him for eternity. But when you reject him, you are choosing to exit yourself from his presence. What would you do tonight? Would you accept him tonight as your Lord and Savior? Even as the, the, the online decision card is placed in the chat, I want you to make a decision because this could be your last. You don't know. This could be the last opportunity that God is giving you tonight. 
And this is not just for those who have not yet accepted Christ, but this is for those who also have already accepted Christ because there are many of you who are living in the church, many of you who are worshiping every day, but you are still not in a solid relationship with God. And so tonight the call is for us to live fully for Jesus. The call is for us to learn from the devastating experiences of others. This is the time for us to make a change. And so tonight, would you make that change? If you make that change, I would like you to just place in the chat, please pray for me, Pastor. Please help me to make that change. And I know that you would not regret it if you make that change for Jesus. To bow your heads with me, Father, we thank you so much for the life and experience of Belshazzar. We thank you to know that your God that would not tarry long with wickedness. We thank you to know that you are a patient and long-suffering God, but tonight we ask in the name of Jesus that you will forgive us if we have been behaving just like Belshazzar. Please, tonight we pray that you change the inner man and make us into the person that you want us to be. There are persons in the chat who have participated by placing in the chat of the need of prayer, of the need of strength to live that life that you have called them to live. Please, tonight, answer their heart desire. Please, transform their lives and make them into the person that you have created them to be. For we have all fall short of your glory in many occasions and many times. But the reason we are alive tonight is because you are, grace, you are gracious and merciful towards us. And we pray tonight that you will give us that strength to do what is right and pleasing in your sight. So Lord, into your hands we commit our lives. And we pray that from tonight onwards, we would forget the things of the world, understanding that all these things of the world will be destroyed. So, Lord, we thank you again for the reminder that we should live for you and live for you only. Please help us to get serious with you. Help us to put aside the sinful practices that we are participating in and help us to live for you tonight. We thank you so much for the blessing that you will bestow upon each and every one of us. And we pray that we'll continue to serve you in spirit and in truth until you come. This is our honest prayer tonight in Jesus' name. My soul has been watered. My battery is fully charged to take on the challenges of this coming week. What about you? I hope and trust that God's message has reached you tonight. We say a special thank you to Pastor Noel for delivering God's word so boldly tonight. Remember to join us here and every other Sunday night for our prayer service. And I urge you to pray without ceasing. And at this time, I will share a few announcements before we close. Join our prayer intercessors tomorrow night and Thursday night at 8 p.m. and also on Sabbath at 6 a.m. for an hour of prayer. Our Zoom ID is 874-9040-9613. I repeat, 874-9040-9613. And the passcode is 013803. 013803. And using the same ID and passcode, you can join the prayer intercessors between 12 noon to 1 p.m. on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. For our upcoming programs and Mission Live, join us on Tuesday for our Pastor's Corner segment at 11.30 a.m. and the rebroadcast will be at 8 p.m. 
Youth Life Unplugged continues on Friday at 7 p.m. Join us for our Sabbath morning service on Saturday at 9 a.m., followed by our AY service at 4 p.m. And remember, join us next Sunday at 7 p.m. on Mission Live Grenada as we continue the journey through the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 6 is our next step. And as I go, I urge you to continue in prayer and may you have a blessed week. Let us pray to close. Almighty God, we thank you for your blessings upon us. We thank you for your message tonight. I pray that many hearts were touched, many lives were changed. We ask, dear Father, that you continue to bless the Mission Life platform so that your message can go forth throughout the world. Continue to be with us. Bless everyone. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Good night and enjoy the rest of the week. We have been called to follow Christ. We are to preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go.